it's a, it's a heavy record. When I say heavy, it's not just heavy as in the stuff I did with Tony Iommi. That's heavy, heavy. My record is heavy, heavy like that, but there's a lot of drama and a lot of light and shade. A lot of whispering stuff, a lot of sensitivity, but there's some anger stuff going on, you know, pissed off at, at certain things, and I wasn't afraid to fly the flag a little bit. I don't believe, you know, you can walk around in anger, but I didn't need it to, to unfold, you know. And, but there's a lot of love on my album. I'm, anyone that knows, I'm a, I'm a loving person, and, but I think this, for me, could be, in my opinion, you guys let me know, could be the most grounded, rounded album I've made in a long, long time. I was very uh, into sports, um, so much so. I mean, athletics at school. Uh, I, I was very much determined to become a soccer player. But at that time, that's when I turned the TV on and there was the Beatles. And then I became fully hooked on music. Um, really only simply, be sim simply because I really loved what I was hearing, not so much what I was seeing, I just really enjoyed the musicality of what I was hearing from the Beatles. I'm not really a, I wasn't, I missed the Elvis years, I was too young, so I kind of missed the Bill Haley stuff, so uh, I'm definitely a, a lad from England that grew up listening to Liverpool music. I was named after Glenn Miller, the famous uh, World War II veteran, Captain Glenn Miller, who plane went down in the World War, World War II. Uh, I was named after him. And funny enough, at nine years old, I was playing trombone in the school orchestra and learning to read music. It was just a coincidence that the, uh, the uh, director of the music school picked me to play trombone, not realizing that I was named after Glenn Miller. So it was a bit of a coincidence. And I didn't start playing bass till I was 17. So I ran through a whole stream of instruments to finally, you know, there's no mistakes to where you should be. And I found myself picking up, the, I was a guitar player on a Thursday night and on Friday night I had to play bass for a band I was joining. So hence me playing with a pick, you know. If I'd have studied bass as a 13 year old, I probably would have played like this. But I think like this, but I play with a pick. I self-taught myself on guitar, and then I went to have lessons for about four or five times. I, I, I lived and breathed, I, I slept with my guitar. I still do sometimes. Great story. Let's just say that I left school, 16, in the July, or June, and of course in uh, September school starts again. And uh, I, 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 got a, I got a regular, normal job working in this shop as a clerk. They call it in England, a clerk, you know. And lo and behold, in July of that same year, a band who were 10 years older than me asked me to learn how to play bass and, and join that band. Hence me becoming a bass player and hence me not working in that shop. So I've never really held down a real job. Let's be clear, music is not really a job, it's a career, so. Let's just say the band I joined as a, a bass player, Finest Keepers were a, 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 a cover band, you know, back in the 60s, that were a lot of cover bands. And then when Trapeze formed, we were writing our own music. I was not the lead singer, I was a background singer. But halfway through the record, the John Lodge from the Moody Blues was the producer. He realized, he realized that I had a voice. I didn't realize it. I didn't, I was just like a background singer. And he said, well, Glenn's got this really high voice. Why don't we use him on this part of a song? I mean, we use him. And if you hear the first Trapeze record, the five piece, you can hear the, the Glenn Hughes, the lead vocalist coming through, kind of, you know, didn't realize I was actually ever going to become a lead singer. Then the management of the band, the five piece band, had a meeting with us, uh, saying, well, we, we feel that Glenn actually is actually probably better singer than the lead singer. I went, me? We, I had no idea. I was just playing bass and singing some backgrounds. I had no idea for a couple of years that I was learning my craft. And by 1971, I was in the door. 
no turning back. The Hall of Fame or you know Grammys or Oscars or it, whatever you want to call it, it's just an evening of love for everyone. When a band has sold over in excess of 125 million copies, you think, you, you think, you know, we as a band, each member, we weren't disappointed. I think the fans were really upset that we weren't getting in. So when I went with David Coverdale, my partner, uh, who came in with, we, we went together and we, we had a great time. It was a, a really great event. Really, really remarkable thing to happen to, to anyone that, that has any ambition in music to be accepted into the hall. We have a different kind of sound in America. <laughs> it's a little different, a little bit, a little bit crazy over here. Uh, Trapeze built a foundation in America, playing to five people a night, like the police did when they came out. Uh, eventually, playing before I left to join Deep Purple to 10,000 people a night. Hence, that's my love because I was a teenager and. America at that time was very open and free and freak flag flying and you know all love, peace and love and touring America was the, the holy grail for me and having people come to my shows and listen to my music that I'd written as a teenager was very important. Deep Purple, of course, huge opportunity for me. Uh, playing with Blackmore, Lord and Pace and newcomer David Coverdale, it was incredible. Um, music is a culture, it's, it's, it's from when I started listening to the Beatles, it was about the, the vinyl and sniffing the vinyl and the three minute songs. It was a pair of jeans, maybe a pair of sneakers or a pair of boots, you know, no shirt, long hair, you know, about the songs, about the jamming of the songs, about being one as a band, creating new music. No really A&R guys working corporate back then. It was, you know, we'd, we'd go in the studio and make a record that we wanted to make. I'm dedicated to, to music. Uh, si simply, music is the center of my universe. I don't do it for money, I don't do it for girls, or I don't do it for drink. I simply do it because I'm supposed to be doing it. I know what I'm supposed to do. You have to be bitten with the love of whatever craft or art you, you do. I was very, very lucky to switch from trombone to piano to guitar to bass to vocals. It just sort of developed for me. Let's just say I'm musically inclined and I had a, a center. The one thing I wasn't when I was a teenager, I wasn't wise. When I, at this age, of course, I'm wise, <laughs> I have no choice. Looking back, I wouldn't change a thing. There's been ups and downs, good, bad, indifference. But music has saved my life. Music, again, I say again, I, like at the Hall of Fame, music is the healer, it really is. Ta -da!